So here we are, Apillion, session three of three. This is the Gauntlet Hangouts, gauntletrpg.com. You can also check us out there. We do lots of online games as well. Uh, if you wanted to, you could hit the subscribe button and, and check out all the videos. I, I've been watching a lot of videos, and they say this kind of thing at the beginning, so I am echoing that. I record about three sessions a week of different things, so hey, maybe you'll find a game you like. Maybe you find a game that you don't like, and you can complain about it. People do that sometimes in the comments, so there we go. Anyway, uh, so Apillion uh, is a dragon epic game. We have young, uh, uh, raw scale drakes uh, who have been out on a journey, on a quest. Uh, they successfully completed their quest last time, uh, and uh, we looked, looked at them uh, at the end of that, and uh, we're going to start back with them having returned back to the civilization. We'll kind of take up there, the, uh, and we'll go over where they're at in terms of delivery, and I want to ask them some things about their lives. We know that at least one thing is on the table, that there is a party uh, that uh, they have finagled uh, an invitation to. Um, and invitation means probably working uh, uh, at their time while they are there. Now, um, did anybody get any new moves from XP at the end of last session? Uh, yes. I can't remember. Uh, I got an upgrade to the hunting visions. Okay. Okay. Anybody Wait. else get anything I should know about? Um, I also got an upgrade to my beast companion. Ooh, and, and what did you take for that? Um, so my beast companion can haul or move heavy objects. Mm -hmm. If you recall, Thistle is small, but I think the way that this works is whenever Thistle sneezes out the little cloud to hide, um, objects like that can... Uh, sh uh, small objects can then be... Con not really consumed, but kind of put into a little pocket dimension thing mm, okay. for that cloud. But I think whenever... Um, Thistle does that, Thistle gets a little bit smaller. Ooh. So changes, you know, eventually if they store more than like two or three things, they're just like tiny until they pull them back out. All right. I like it. I'm, I'm glad, I, glad to hear that it can be reversed because um, you had me worried there for just a second. So how many moves do, have you taken so far? Or, from, or how many advancements rather? I've just taken one. Yeah. Okay, so you're at level one of Raw Scale Drake. Uh, I'm yeah. guessing uh, Tavern is at Roskill Drake too. So am I. Uh, and and Samograth hasn't leveled up yet. So, yep. okay. Just making sure. Sure, absolutely. So uh, we are going to take up with you coming back to the city. Um, uh, having done the wilderness travel, we will. We will condense that. We see the montage of you traveling back over the areas that you came through uh, at the beginning and returning back to the city. Uh, again... Can I bring my vision? Sure. Sorry. No, <laughs> Sorry, I, just, I was just Go wondering ahead, when I was that. allowed to roll that. So. Sure. Alright, that is not good. Um, that's a 7, I think. It's 5 plus 2, 7, yes. Uh, okay. And... I and I will tell the and since I got the advancement, my vision will be about an aspect of Dragonio that or I get to tell you what my vision will be like kinda about. You told me okay. the vision still, but I but I like I want to know more about Fujira or Fujira, whatever his name is. If that makes sense. Oh, you mean uh, the the dragon who you just left? Yeah. Okay. Um, like, if the vision is about that, that would be good. It's it still works as normal. It's just I get to choose what the vision is about with the advancement. <laughs> so I think that what you will see is almost a. like like a, a kind of a, a cave painting version of the vision, like an animated one in some oh, ways. Okay. And the and Fujira's cave, you were in there for some time. So we see that same texture and that same color, the uh, 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 archways that Samograth pointed out, the details that demonstrated that Fujira, you know, came from the house of architects, had those skills. 
but we'll we see that the animation and we do see like a stylized version of Fujira kind of blocky done kind of moving um and we can see him building that cave and isolating and we see the shadow uh, we see the shadow pressing in on Fujira and each day Fujira gets smaller and sort of the shadow outline of Fujira gets bigger um and then at suddenly we see these four little figures animated come trundling into view and you can recognize each one of you coming in and we see Fujira sort of in his almost full shadow self circle the four um but then they they speak speak with him and as they talk with him as they kind of circle around they they take pieces of the shadow off they they remove it they pull it away from him and we see him sailing you out to the island we see your journey and we see that last little bit of of shadow there at the end and we see samograth talking and kind of pulls away that last little bit of shadow and kind of throws it into the ocean. And uh, we see that shadow broken, that this was a dragon haunted and almost to the edge of being consumed by the shadow, but you managed to pull them back. Does that seem like a fair fair answer? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, so uh, we will we'll take up with you having returned to the city. Uh, we described it with these huge walls and barriers, but these these great old ruins outside of it. Again, this city is built for big dragons. Uh, so the, the the huge gates as you come in, the other dragons are walking through like you know brontosaurus size and things like that, and your little raptors moving along beside them, you know, trying to, to stay out from underfoot and, and people, things are flying in and out. Uh, the, the city is, is built up. Um, the guards almost don't notice you as, as you come in. Um, and, uh, so when you return to, to the great city, huge bustling metropolis that, that you have, have lived and trained and studied in these last few years, uh, is your first goal to go and speak with Imperius Rex um, or Onyx. Onyx, sorry, Imperius Onyx, uh, or is it to uh, go and uh, 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 return and tell your friends or your family that you've come back, the, the, the rest of your house? What do you think? Um, let me start with, with you, Nicholas. Do you think that uh, that you would lead the clutch back, or do you do you have things you wish to do first? Um, so I think we. Sh I'd like to um, go back first um, to Imperious Onyx, but then I think we need to go visit Ugris. Ugris, the provisioner. Because we, because yes. we need to get give them their stuff back along with a fruit. <laughs> yes. Okay. So uh, if that if no one objects, we'll we'll cut to that scene. Um, uh, so I'm going to let you uh, 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 frame this. Then uh, Ren, where do you find Imperious Onyx? So which one are we going to first? So Ugris or Imperious? I heard Imperious Onyx first. Okay, so we're going to see Imperious at his place, I guess. Okay, what? <laughs> Since tell me something about party. it. Yeah, what what is it uh, like? Apart from it being huge and black yeah. because onyx, <laughs> uh, and is it is it is it made of onyx? Is it is it black like that? You think? I think it's actually not onyx. It's obsidian. Okay. <laughs> it just it just it, he just he, he just wanted something that's black but didn't have onyx, so it had to Does be. Does he do the thing with his claw where he pushes his glasses up and goes? Well, actually, it's obsidian, not onyx. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, uh, so that's probably how the shadow. Well, actually, he doesn't. He doesn't actually do that because he wants, he wants to 
and he wants to keep up keep up appearances but it, but like if so, for example the, libra the librarian showed up then they would definitely do that okay they would get into that one one ups one ups dragon ship uh, yep. uh, that would be going on so we, uh, it's it's black it's dark tell me one other interesting fact about this place it's not that old I, uh like i i think um I'm not sure if if Imperial Sonic is an elder dragon. Is he an elder dragon or is he just bearded? I think he's just bearded. Um, okay. He's, he's sort of the the middle the middle of the ages, but but getting towards the top of that. All right, because it feels like it should be the home of an elder dragon after they dedicated a stronghold to them. Like it feels like it should have been, like. <laughs> Uh, like like, a, like a, a stronghold. Okay, <laughs> but for so, some reason they did it. They dedicated it to him early. Interesting, interesting. Um, uh, especially interesting given that that he went through those trying times and and nearly nearly fell to the shadow. Yeah. Um, so he will will greet the four of you as you come in again. Uh, he is a large, uh, uh, dark skinned, uh, uh, dark scaled. Drake, dragon with the wings. It's that black that goes to blue, uh, uh, and the undercolor of it, um, where it kind of uh, catches the light. But again, he still has some scars from the the war, um, and uh, he he looks uh, to to all of you, and uh, uh, he is of uh, House uh, Mindoth. Uh, that's that's his house originally. I'm going to establish that. Um, so he will will look to to Tavern um, when when the four of you come in, um, and he will say, "You've returned faster than I had anticipated. Things are well." Yes, everything uh, went really well. We uh, were able to go and and get. The, the fruit, which uh, Fox has, and uh, yeah, we got back very quickly because we are professionals. Uh, we are, need to give one fruit back to ogres because we promised them a fruit, but we you have three. That should oh. be good, right? Three? That uh, Well, that is that is quite a, a bounty. Um, tell you well, what. Three, three more. <laughs> What do you mean, three more? Because we gave one to Ugris. Right, right. I we heard that. Four. So you gave yeah. me three. So is there three more? Are there six? No, there's only four. There's only That's four. 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 So you're giving me four. No, I'm giving you three. We're giving uh, you three. We're giving one to Ugris. Three. So Ugris gets one and I get four. No, wait. Three. So you said three more. Okay. So yes. Well, then uh, let's make the numbers more complicated. And I'll just take two. And you may keep one that way you can use it you can enjoy it when it ripens or you can trade it to someone for something um does that seem like a fair exchange i i could plan it uh you could i do not know how a tree like that would grow here but uh but uh, certainly there must be someone amongst our house who would would be able to tell us such a thing and he, that sorry, they reach out their 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 claws to 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 take the two fruits from you. And Vox can barely contain himself. He's just so excited. He's like, oh, and he hands a couple of the fruits over. Says, oh. So tell us more about the party that's coming up. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Puts them on a table, and again, when when they set these on the table, the table is still up high. It's it's set to his to, to their height. Um, uh, so so they do reach up and they bring down uh, a, a tray with something to to drink. Uh, Agatha, what do you suppose Drake's drink? Um. I think that Drake's specifically drink the 
it's not lava, it's magma. Yes. Um, that flows from certain, so they're like springs, but they're not mm -hmm. springs because <laughs> it's volcanic. Um, so you gather them from specific places and then that that is the drink of choice because it's very nutritious. So it's good for for drinks specifically. So all the, the fruits and alcohols and things are very much the candy and treats, but, but uh, 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 you have the sense that the Imperious Onyx wants to take care of growing uh, raw scales. Uh, so it does put down these, these, the, I mean, they look nutritious. It's, it's like he's handed you some Ovaltine or soy milk, um, uh, or both, uh, uh in a, a big, big glasses. So tell me, tell me, did anything untoward occur on your journey? Did anything what now? Untoward, unusual. Oh, uh, strange uh, oh yeah we we found all sorts of you know very interesting things we saw like this monster that we kind of ran away from and then we whenever we got there we couldn't swim across and then we found fujira and fujira helped us swim across and then we saw the bees and, and the fujira bees wanted, uh, yes fujira yeah. who is fujira he's a dragon that lives in a cave by the water and he swims, he doesn't fly. He might fly, but we don't know that. that we never saw him swim. fly. We never saw him fly. Oh. I do not know this Fujira. I did not know that any drakes uh, live near there. Uh, you will have to tell uh, the librarian uh, so that they can record this. Of course. Fujira said that they would eat the fruit to forget is this is a very grand hall that you're having this party in do you mean to serve the fruit to the guests so they could forget uh, no no it is it is uh, not quite like that uh i know that when the fruit is taken and eaten as it is uh it is it does that. It has an effect to to cause a loss of memory, but when properly repaired by one of the great uh, uh, Drake chefs, uh, they will will prepare it into a, a, a beverage and dilute its effect, ferment it, and it will. Uh, how do I put this? Uh, it pops in your mouth. I, I can't quite describe it, but but it's it's it, it's like it bubbles there. Wow. I would love to try that. Well, if you you will be at the party, so we will give you a little bit of that, but only a little. It is a potent beverage, and I wouldn't want any of you to be overcome by by its effects. Yippee! <laughs> Especially Vox. There, there is that. This is, uh, I will take these fruits to the the great chef. Uh, and uh, uh, he will, they will prepare it. And uh, uh, tomorrow night, we will have the gathering um, uh, in the hall uh, uh, of the Green Heart. Um, so come there at uh, dusk, and I will show you what you'll need to do while the party is going on. And uh, is there anything else I should know? Uh, there was the shadow in that island. It's gone now. I'm sorry. Say what now? The shadow was in that island, but it's gone now. What's so the shadow what? had actually descended um, on the beehive. There was a beehive there, and there was a, a, a dragon that had become part bee. And the bees, I think, were keeping him alive, but the shadow was keeping him alive, too. And then um, we helped free him from the shadow bee stinger and, and he died passed away but we we still have the stinger and it looks really dangerous and then all right we still the, have that stinger for some reason and then the fruit got better <laughs> we washed it in the in the water and the and the guardian gave us the recipe the to make it better water. and then we came back Cavern, you were very, very taciturn in your description. It seems like much, much more happened than, than the simple tale of the travel there. 
Uh, are you talking to me or to Vox? To Tavern. Oh, okay. Uh, um, well, I just hadn't gotten to those details yet. I, I was going to. Well, it's important that you tell all this to librarians so that they can record yes, this down. Um, uh, and if you borrowed anything uh, to return it, I had a note from the librarian that uh, you had uh, uh, borrowed a book. Uh, they will want to ask about that. Um, well, uh, uh, I will see you tomorrow evening. Uh, you should uh, uh, deliver the, the fruit, check in with the librarian, and uh, obviously check in with your superiors at your houses uh, to tell them that you have returned successfully and that uh, your clutch has completed yet another task. Wonderful. We will do. And we, we look forward to seeing you at the party later. Yes. See uh, you there. Well, technically, Tyron just stays here because uh, his husband of superior, I guess, is in Sonics. So. Well, I would assume uh, that <laughs> he would have uh, some say in that. So we'll we'll come back uh, on that. Um, so uh, uh, you can deliver the fruit to, to, to Ugris. Um, are you when you when you when the four of you arrive at the provisioner again grumpy, super grumpy and uh, super uh, tight fisted? Uh, uh, they 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 do look and and they do have you first check in everything, all the blankets and the ropes and the spikes and all the little little things that you were given. Yes. These these look these look to be all in order. It is fine. It's fine. I, I will I will put a a, a a check, not a check plus, but a check in the records next to your names for this. Oh, but we brought and you a fruit? back a fruit. Like Don't yeah. you think the fruit means it's worth a check plus? It is a very plus look, fruit. <laughs> let, let me let, allow me to see the fruit. Oh yeah, and I think it's dunk. You know, put the fruit up on the you know on the desk and and say it was very hard to get. We struggled very hard. We had to defeat the shadow to get it. Oh, you can tell that Ugris has stopped paying attention to you and is kind of in that <laughs> sniffing around the fruit. You know, breathing in the bouquet of it. Yeah, this this seems acceptable. Uh, I, I will put a check, check plus, plus. Yeah. by your names. Yes. Uh, you know, kind of rolls it off the, the table, clearly sets it down below for later for careful preservation. Group high fives. <laughs> he, he doesn't pay attention to your celebrations. He seems, seems occupied. He's like, was there anything else? No? Okay. No. Okay. Go. Okay, we leave. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, with the two sort of group major things taken care of, uh, uh, let me check in with each of you. And I want to see who you would go and talk to, uh, uh, either in your house or friends or, or what you would do now that you've returned back to, to the city. You have a great tale to tell. You have a great great uh, a story and you've also completed a, a task so uh let me start then with samagrath uh who would you go to um would you go see a superior or if you have a friend outside the clutch you would go and talk to or a mentor or a teacher who would be your first sort of stop i think it's someone within my house uh so it's what is the house name again? It's Rothskar. Yeah, so it's someone within Rothskar who is probably also an artisan. Okay. Is this the person who taught you the, the glass works then? Um, so they didn't teach me the glass works specifically. I mm -hmm. think they worked with another material, maybe metal, some kind okay. of metal. But they're my mentor because we both are, we both craft things we're both crafts dragons <laughs> um so that's that's who i'd go to there 
So uh, you will go and see uh, uh, Vizali, uh, the Iron Heart, uh, uh, and Vizali works works in iron. Uh, uh, Vizali is not as well regarded, perhaps, as some of the other uh, uh, Drakes. His works do not have the the finery, or the gaudiness, or the beauty of some of the the Drakes that work in precious metals. Uh, but uh, his iron is solid. And it, it speaks to you when when you see it, um, and he is for a uh, uh, a dragon uh, uh, a drake with a very low center of gravity. So he is sort of a, a short, shorter, wider uh, uh, dragon who uh, uh, notes when you come in and uh, will will look down, see you. Um, where do you find him? Are we in a forge? Are we in a, art studio or in a, a dining hall where yeah it's in a it's in their forge uh, they it yeah they i think they have their own workspace they have different elemental forges that mm -hmm. are spread around so we see uh, the ice forge that uses elemental ice to to crystallize and freeze things and we see one you know of elemental light and we can see another that is elemental fire we see all of those spread around uh yeah. they're working with different techniques yeah. and uh, and there's also the ink forge which is like they work with words but then it's like they weave them in the air they create that um uh, do you think that that they create a physical object or are they creating new language um it's i think they're they're sort of like spells yeah um, okay and they but they affect they're like very deep in the infrastructure of the city so a lot of it is not necessarily like oh super cool affect dragon brains it's more like oh make sure the sewage is running properly <laughs> in spell <laughs> you have have passages and paragraphs and volumes that have been written about how the sewage system works. Yeah. They, they forge that out in different different ways. They rewrite the text of the city. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, 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 Vizali uh, uh, will we'll see you and waddles over to where you are at. Um, uh, and uh, did I send you out to get something? I thought I sent you out to get something. I take out like a now wilted flower and <laughs> give it to Vasali. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I thought I, thought I did. I, I wasn't imagining things. Mm -hmm, okay. And puts his head. So, 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 how are you? I came back from an adventure, Vasali. You were and adventuring? I, I show them the dead beast. <laughs> Just all the dead things from my bag. This is a uh, collect a lot of odd things in your pockets there. So but that's a bee, right? It's not the right color. It's dead. Oh, is it the right color for being dead? It was evil. Bees can be evil. And then I take out the stinger which I've held close to me all this time. Ooh. And he, uh, they kind of, you know, shuffle back a little bit from that. What, 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 what is that? Bee sting. So they were evil bees and they had a stinger that large? It was a dragon. Could, could, can I get you to start at the beginning? And, and he'll ask you to tell him, tell them the, the, the full story of, of what uh, occurred there. Yeah, Samagrath tells it in a very um, non-linear way. <laughs> because I imagine Samagrath to be very young. Uh, mm -hmm. It's of raw scales, so... Sometimes Samograth is very clear and able to communicate, and then sometimes not less so. Uh, and uh, Vizali has listened to you before, knows the pattern of this, you know, puts, puts a pin in remembering which parts you've gone back to, you know, like a choose-your-own-adventure novel, and it's yeah. flipping around. Yeah. Um, 
uh, and a at the end, Vizali will say, I think I might be able to show you something you can do with that stinger. There are arts, difficult arts, challenging ones, that were given to us to purify objects that were touched by the shadow. Let me show you some of that, and then perhaps you can try to use your glass arts to purify it and change it. Shall I show okay. you that? Yes. I, I also waddle forward. Okay. Maybe the reason why Samargoth waddles is because Vizali waddles. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it's a habit because Vizali walks that way and kind of shakes back and forth. Um, so we will we'll cut away as we see Vizali pulling down different kinds of glass off the shelves to, to put over into your arms and is, is starting to talk arcane. We'll cut away uh, from that. Um, let us come to uh, uh, Tavern. So uh, Tavern is going to uh, return to the library and immediately like brush off the book and thank you for the book. It was very helpful. Um, tick, 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 tick. Looks at the book. C, C takes out a little brush, very carefully goes and starts, you know, brushing the corners of the pages there. You know, very carefully getting it clean. Flips through each page deliberately. I thought we established there were scrolls. Then, then it is a scroll. Then it unrolls <laughs> it, checks mm -hmm. it. Uh, uh, I live for Maria corrected me in the middle of these things. So uh, uh, the scroll unrolls, gets the edges cleaned off, uh, clarified. He says it looks like someone threw this at some point. Uh, no, I, I can't say that 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 happened at all. Mm -mm. It has that appearance, though. It, it, it may have got tossed about while because we had to fight bees. It was really harrowing, but I did my best. I did everything I could to keep this book safe. You fought bees, and that was harrowing. Well, yes, they were. They were bees that were the wrong color. And we had to go over water, so that was very difficult. With the book. You had to swim and fight miscolored bees. Interesting, interesting. Uh, well, I will, I will, will note that you have returned the the book in relatively relatively stable condition. Uh, but th thank you. I'm sure that's the the best uh, <laughs> that can be done. Sure. Uh, 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 Nicholas wanted to know if he could be there as well. Is that cool with you, Tavern? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so, Tavern, uh, are you going to tell the the librarian your story? How do you how do you coach this? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll I'll just convey uh, some of the story. Uh, um, you know, uh, probably leave out the the bit about the the shadow. Um, you know, some something had. Uh, change the way the bees were working, and and you know they their their hive had become crystalline, and they were all black. But uh, uh, we were able to uh, bring them to their senses and and get order restored. And I was king of the be or, uh, I was king of the bees for a short while, or queen of the bees. And and the librarian proceeds to ask you in that that way that. Elder dragons do, where they ask you the least of least interesting questions, like <laughs> how big were the bees, and what Very. did the what did the stones look like, and you know how long passed between this point and this point. This is what elder dragons, older dragons do: is they ask all the most boring questions. They are the worst, um, uh, and 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 makes meticulous annotation about that. Um, Tavern uh, tells this story, goes through this. Uh, what are you doing while this is going on, Nicholas? Um, so I think, actually, I stayed behind to talk to Semigrath real quickly and tell her. Um, so you'll tell the house or tell them 
um, you'll tell the house that we made it back okay. I'm going to go to the librarian because I think, you know, they said that there, we needed to tell our story to the librarian. Is that okay? Is that okay? And then I think Vox gets to the library late. So I think he comes in as uh, Tavern is saying, you know, is telling the story. I'm like, oh, did I did I miss the part about the shadow dragon bees? Wait, wait. I so uh, wanted to tell that. The, 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 uh, let me roll back then and starting to cross things out. Um, uh, and uh, uh, is starting to to, to more question uh, 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 you. You have the sense that uh, that this dragon is going to keep you here for a very long time. If <sighs> if if they are not somehow brought to a halt, uh, they will most certainly keep you here questioning you and getting all of the, the lovely details and bits. Um, so uh, what do you want to do, Tavern? Do you want to, do you want to stay and, and uh, you know, leave this dragon with a good impression of you, but having, you know, wasted so many hours? Or do you want to do something else? Uh, I want to do something else because um, as they're asking questions, say like, yes, and, and, um, and we we brought the book the uh, the fruit back, and I was thinking maybe we could try and plant some of the seeds and grow them here in the town. Do you have any really good books on gardening? All right. So uh, it does this seem like you're trying to sort of fool and convince them, or are you kind of trying to stand up to to kind of break this cycle of of Drakeish questioning? Um, I would say probably the the convince them to, to move on to another topic okay uh, or trigger let's have you roll with charm then Alrighty. and i may help if you need it okay true and my charm is one that's a five a six yeah okay so let me see if i can help that <laughs> so the way that i'm helping is vox is really invested in telling the story he really is excited. They are really excited about saying over and over again, this is what we did, and going over the really exciting parts. So whenever um, the librarian starts to talk about the boring parts, Vox goes back to the really exciting parts about how they crossed the sea and how they met um, Fujira and how the shadow dragon was there and we, you know, all that kind of stuff. So let's roll. I think I have one friendship. For yeah. Me. So you get to roll with a plus one. Yes. So let's roll and see what that is. I got a six. All right. So, uh, I think that uh, the the librarian uh, uh, does does take a breath, but calls in some other drakes, ones who are specialty. Like here's a drake who specializes in insects, uh, and here's a drake who specializes in 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 water, and. Uh, uh, Mark XP. Uh, they will will move through and they will uh, uh, question and ask, and uh, you're trapped in here for a number of hours. And Vox just can't stand it. After he's got through telling his story for a certain period of time, he's just itching to leave and can't. Oh. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. uh, but but, but uh, we have a, a thing to get to. Uh, Okay, one more question. I'll do just just one more question. And and the camera probably pans out as we can see it it getting darker outside, uh, uh, even as this is this is happening. Um, uh, so let me cut from from you two. Uh, I don't think you need to mark shadow uh, for for that, um, uh, but uh, we'll we'll keep that in mind. Uh, let's come to Ren. Mm -hmm. uh, you've returned back. Um, do you go talk to a mentor? Do you go talk to uh, you know a colleague? What what would you do? I'll talk to a mentor for a brief while, and then what I want to focus on is finding out who Fujira is. Oh, great. Um, so, so in that case, how would you go to find out about Fujira? Would you would you ask your mentors? Would you go to the house that you know he they they are from? Uh, I was gonna. I was thinking of going to the house of Roscar. 
Okay. Because that's the one that Fujira mentioned. Yeah. Um, besides Ren and uh, uh, Nicholas, oh, sorry, besides uh, uh, Nicholas and Samagrath, um, who else do you know from Rothscar? Not many people. Hmm? The people I pissed off the other time were another house altogether. So. Yeah, so you have some 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 enemies there, uh, but not uh, we're a different house though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, just, I was just gonna point that it's not Rothscar. It's okay. It was it. Yeah. So uh, I'll put my two question to you again. Who do you know besides uh, uh, Samagrath and Nicholas from Rothscar? Uh. Let me think of a name. Uh, I think their name is going to be uh, Yellow Eyes. Okay. <laughs> because, of course. <laughs> uh, so I imagine a uh, 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 an older dragon with kind of chestnut brown. Uh, like almost like horse brown uh, 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 scales that kind of glisten, and then the, those you know bright yellow eyes uh, uh, in it its head, and uh, you know that it is the dragon that sort of assigned to keep an eye on raw scales and answer their questions, and as you can imagine, this is not a job that many many of the older drakes relish. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Yellow Eyes does does acknowledge you and will say, you're the, uh, the seer, right? Yes. <laughs> You've clutch mates with some of our own. Yes. <laughs> And you come here, why? What would, can Rothscar do for you? I want to ask about a dragon that was banished called Fujira. Or I think I think they were banished. I'm not sure. <laughs> they left. Is that what you, so, so is that what you say? Yeah. Why are you asking about Fujira? Because they seem to be better now. Where did you see Fujira? In a cave. Ah, uh, and where was this cave? Somewhere. Can I have my question answered, please? Not until I know why and where of this. This is not a dragon that you, raw scales, should be interacting with. Well, too bad. It already happened. Can I stand up to an older dragon? <laughs> yeah, I think I think actually we've kind of come to that because uh, you are certainly talking back. Yeah. Uh, 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 to a dragon from another house, uh, uh, yeah. uh, speaking disrespectfully to them. Uh, courage, that is gonna be fucking amazing. Uh, let me uh, roll and re roll. Oh my god, that is a four. I get to mark XP. So, <laughs> so yeah, the good news is you get to mark XP, <laughs> yes. Um, but there is that bit where you kind of stand up because you've had some dra dragons that are, you know, you've talked back to a little bit recently and you interact with Jira and you've defeated this bee thing. And then his head spins around and it is down and his head is huge. It's bigger than you are. And his mm -hmm. snout is up on you. It is mm -hmm. up to your face. And the room kind of darkens as he draws mm -hmm. in. Uh, you can feel his strength, and he says, You little one, do not come into my house. 
and tell me what to do. You do not have that right. You do not have the right to speak of one such as Fujira and then snark back to me. But what happened to him? I will speak with your masters. They will hear of your disrespect. Now, leave. What do you want to mark on your shadow track? Uh, what can I mark? <laughs> uh, uh, hmm. I think fear. Like, okay. Or, hmm. yeah, fear. Is fear what you want to go with? Uh, so that is the thing, is, is that will consume you. This dragon is so much larger than you and he, he they are visibly angry at you like you can feel the waves of it it is a force and it's not you felt draconic irritation and bother but you probably haven't felt this kind of directed anger uh, on you and it, it makes you step back um, right. um and he dismisses you and sends you out of of the household um and you're kind of shaken as you do that. Okay. Does that seem fair? Uh, and for fear, I think I'm gonna hide the fact that I did this to my friends, if that makes sense. That that makes makes sense to me. Uh, yeah. Can uh, I see? Can I see Ren when Ren comes out? Well, it's up to you. Uh, I was gonna move to to doing the, the the glass thing, but do you think that you're you're uh, present here for this? Uh, I'm cool with that if you want. If there. If Ren is going through Rothgar, they could just. This could be like a hallway that. Yeah. We yeah. Could and, and, each and other. It makes sense that you would feel that that shift because it is a kind of a uh, that anger is an energy that kind of moves out in the halls and the the your uh, uh, Vizali kind of reaches his head their head up like what was that, um, and you kind of move to the to the great archway of the the foundry of the forges and you'll see Ren you know backing out of one of these rooms what do you do uh uh Samograth. Ren Ren and I'm, I'm going to <laughs> down from wherever I was perching I was gonna run the fuck away because I'm afraid <laughs> oh so do you just ask me uh yeah, I run past you. <laughs> so yeah, uh uh in a way you haven't seen before. Uh Ren doesn't even acknowledge you really and and runs and ignores you. Clearly, clearly scared. Um so that will allow you to clear fear. Um because you ran away. Um Wait. I thought that was like the uh Though you have to do this immediately after, or I, I'm not sure how those work. <laughs> right. Hang on one second. I was seeing a different yeah, way, but uh, the shadow must take the action I associated with the shadow. So I did that. So therefore, I have the shadow still marked. It's not that it clears. Okay. It's not masks where you clear when you do things. <laughs> it's oh. more like. It's more like marking yeah. conditions in for villains in masks, in which they do the thing automatically. So, Samograth, what do you want to do? Uh, Samograth is confused. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go very slowly into the room that Ren ran out of. And you will feel that force and you will see uh, uh, yellow eyes. You've had to deal with yellow eyes before on several occasions and they are uh, you see them clearly working with some some magics here like like pulling something and shaping something when you come in. Um, do you want to interrupt and speak with them? Do you want to uh, see what they're doing? What do you want to do? Yeah, I, I'm going to... So I've been 
shaping a piece of glass, I'm assuming, with Liz Lizali or Vizali? Um, uh, Vizali. Vizali, okay. Uh, so I am going to, it's just, oh, well, I don't know if I realize that I'm still doing it. It's, I'm still shaping it, like floating above my paw as I waddle forward. What are you making? Hmm. Uh, Samograth, when did you come in? Now? I am compiling a report. I was... There was a, a, a young drake, not unlike yourself, who came in and uh, was disrespectful in uh, our house's presence. And I am sending a missive to be carried to their... Uh, uh, mentor uh, to chastise them for such a thing. Oh. Are you angry? And they stop because that's not something they want to admit. And they that that they kind of tamp that down and they say, uh, not angry so much as b bothered by the disruption of the order. That's very pretty. I'm assuming that Yellow Eyes is probably doing ink. Yeah, that ink. sounds good. Shaping it together. Um, do you want to try and calm them down uh i think what i want to do is actually uh, what's the name for reading them <laughs> uh, okay yeah. yeah absolutely um so you would roll charm with that or i th think i would roll um cun cunning yeah because oh. i complimented them oh that's right yes you do <laughs> clever clever <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't. Can I just roll in our chat? You, you can roll in the chat, or I can also. Here's the roll for your party link. Yes. Either way. Okay. Charming kitten. Oh. Uh, two, two. I roll? Uh, I rolled an eight. Uh, yeah. An eight. Uh, so yes. you get to ask one question off of the study another dragon. Okay. Eight or with your gunning, that's nine, but whatever. Oh, nine. Um, so my question is how how can I get um, how can I get yellow eyes to to um to calm down <laughs> maybe not calm down because i want i want to get yellow eyes to like be nice there we go i want <laughs> how do i get yellow eyes to be nice to run i think that there are sort of two parts to that one is that you're first going to need to to appeal to yellow eyes's vanity and get them in that mode and get them calm that way um uh they are architects they have a certain amount of, of vanity and, and like all dragons acquiring that and then you're going to need to somehow get once they're they're calmed down get ren to also compliment them and defer to them. Does that seem like a fair answer? That does seem fair, and it also seem like a very difficult task. <laughs> it does seem slightly unlikely, um, yeah. uh, uh, given the, the people involved. Yeah, well, yeah, so, well, okay. All right, so I'm gonna cut away from you. Um, I, what I wanna do is I wanna check in uh, with Tavern and uh, then with, with Nicholas and we'll, we'll see where we're at. 
Um, so uh, Tavern, um, it's late when the last scholar finally goes, well, uh, I think that's all I have. Does anyone else have any more questions? Was there anything else? And you'll see one of the, the, the drakes start to raise their wing up and and perhaps sees the look on your face and lowers their wing. Uh, the librarian goes, uh, so I think we're done here, Tavern and uh, uh, Vox, you can, you can go. Thank you. Apologize for keeping you so late. Oh, I it's, think it's no problem at all. I think Voss has actually fallen asleep a couple of times. <laughs> and I think the librarians wake him up occasionally to ask him a question. And then he'll go back to sleep until they wake him up again. Yeah. I picture a couple of moments where uh, uh, your uh, uh, thistle maybe is pulling your eyelids open to uh, <laughs> uh, 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 pretend that you're actually awake. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Tavern, uh, it's late. Do you just go back to bed, or do you have anything you wish to do here now that this question is open? Or do you want to now, at this late hour, attempt to press the librarian for for something? Uh, at this point, no. Uh, we'll, i just head back. So, um, Vox, did we miss the party? Was that today, or is it in a couple days, right? Oh, no, no, it's or tomorrow. Is it tomorrow already? You no, know, the party is tomorrow night. We have oh. another day. Yes. We're fine. I wouldn't have let us miss the party. Okay. So, uh, you were, do you, I assume your clutch has like uh, chambers that you stay in? I think yeah. so, yes. Um, uh, so, tell me, Tavern, tell me something about these the, the, the chambers that are set aside for your clutch. Uh, the clutches is our group or like yeah, the other? Yeah, the, the four of you. Uh, yeah. Um, our, our clutch is uh, um, uh, set towards, uh, I think we established that it was like built into a mountain, the whole town is. So we have, uh, it's on one of the lowest levels, uh, like, off to the side, uh, kind of behind a, a little tree, uh, so it's very much like pushed out of the way. But but Tavern really likes it that way because uh, he has his little tree right there, and uh, there's areas like laid out, and each of us has like a, a little collection of things that we've gotten along the way. And what does your Obviously, space look like? Um, my space is uh, mostly. Um, twigs and, and flowers and different things like that and pressed uh, and then there's a couple scrolls beside it um, and fairly simple do you think you have an artistic eye or is it very much these are the things I found here we go uh, more uh, they're, they're laid out in like rows so like you can see like the, there's a, a pile of twigs that go clearly from the lightest to the darkest so and he can identify which which type of plant each one of them came from so you like independence that's your virtue <laughs> but you also like sorting things <laughs> yes you know so so if if tavern were be to be given uh, a, a big bowl of uh, draconic skittles the first thing tavern would have to do is sort them out get them in the right things and get the numbers evened out mm -hmm. yes. okay <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, I imagine that there are other, uh, clutches and, and raw scale drakes, uh, who have little houses and areas near you, little ladders and things like that. Um, there are probably a couple of them that are, 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 they anxiously wait, they, but they see that you're exhausted. So they don't bother you to get the story, even though they're kind of like, like Vox, shh, just, just vibrating. They want to know what happened, um, but they can tell that you're tired. Um, and they're like, will you, will you tell us? Will you, will you tell us tomorrow? Will you, will you tell us tomorrow? 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 Uh, of, of course. Tomorrow? Yes. I'll, I'll, tomorrow, I'll, I'll happily share the story. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> they'll, they'll back away. He's going to tell us the story tomorrow. He's going to tell us the story tomorrow. 
Uh, Vox, what about you? So I think Vox goes back um, to the uh, hole that we live in, um, along with Telesin, Telvin. And um, I think that whenever, you know, I think Vox is very bleary eyed, but whenever the other Drakes ask questions, um, I perk up a little bit, look around, and then I think, you know, you can see the gears turning. I could tell the story now. I could go to sleep. I think I'm going to go to sleep. So it goes back to, uh, goes back home with uh, Tom. And what does your section of uh, the, the clutches hold look like? So I think Vox moves from location to location. So sometimes it's in the living, like it's in the, the living room kind of area, the common area. And um, we'll just move a, a uh, large blanket, you know, a large thing to sleep on um, from space to space. I think that the the official living quarters that he's been left, been given, is like full of all sorts of treasures from things that he's found. Rocks that are really cool and leaves and all sorts of things like that that are quickly forgotten, but they're now a part of his hoard. Yeah part of their herbal. yeah you're not sure why they're there now are your things organized uh as well as uh taverns is um they are organized chronologically so the new stuff goes in front <laughs> and maybe occasionally the back stuff is swept out with you know whenever someone needs to clean the area yeah all right all right that seems fair to me um i, I want to take a break here when i come back uh i want to check in with uh uh Sam McGrath and the forging and Ren with the outcome uh, of that, that panic. And uh, we'll see where everybody's at. Seem fair. Okay. Let's take five.
All right. How are you being, Agatha? Uh, I'm all right. All right. Cool. <laughs> I'm, yeah, been a little busy, but yeah, things, right. work things. Oh, work things, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, you're not moving yet. It's after Gen Con. After Gen Con, yeah. Like, right after Gen Con. <laughs> so, like, immediately. Or I'm not even sure what the plan is because my mom's going to help me move at the end of July and then at some point in August I'm gonna start I'm gonna actually move yeah that's and that's why I only posted a game in the 22nd because it's my birthday then and uh, I wanted to do something and I think I'll be set at that point okay and I've only signed up for another game which is the cheat your own adventure because I want to play cheat your own adventure because everyone in the gauntlet has been playing that <laughs> so yeah, yeah I want to play it too I'm curious <laughs> yeah. how that game works yeah I haven't Don't. played yet which is a travesty because I've been here for like a year or a bit more than a year so <laughs> fair enough yeah We'll get Stephen back and then we'll continue on. There yeah. you go. So uh, uh, after this this sort of weird uh, uh, thing that, that this read on yellow eyes, um, what do you want to do, uh, Samograth? Is this something that you want to want to work on, or do you want to return to the forges? There's certainly a lure to to that. Crafting's easy. People are hard. Mm. Well, I I think the way that Samograth understands that this is what they need to do is that uh, Samograth thinks back to all the times where um, Yellow Eyes... Oh, actually, when uh, Vizali has interacted with Yellow Eyes, and I think Yellow Eyes is kind of like one of those... like like the the dragon that has like a lot of weight and or authority in in our house mm -hmm. so that, and then every time like sometimes well sometimes you always just likes to throw their weight around just because just to kind of maybe get they're a little insecure i don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> and oh that makes sense and, yeah and whenever they come to the forges or the forge where uh Vizali and and Samagath are, then, then Vizali is always like, oh, like, oh, welcome. And it's always very like accommodating. And then Yellow Eyes always, it, you can tell that they're like pleased about it. Maybe there's like a certain shine to their scale. <laughs> and so Samagath is just like, oh yeah, I remember that. And then, uh, how would Sam go about this? I, I think <laughs> it's good if you, if you imitate Vizali's manner and attempt to 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 do that you, you kind of think you've maybe got the trick yeah i think like sergath so, so actually like um spots a broom nearby and then just starts like sweeping <laughs> around yellow eyes because that's what probably <laughs> always does and then it and the sweep sweep sweeps and it's like so clean so clean for you <laughs> let's have you roll cunning Okay. So what'd you get? Uh, I rerolled and it was, oh, okay. Oh, I guess okay. I with cunning that is a ten. That is a ten. So yeah. uh you can they 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 will be fooled, 
Uh, you can learn a valuable secret or create an opportunity. Uh, sorry, you can learn a valuable secret or create an opportunity, and you can 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 get both of those if you'd like. Oh. Um. So, for example, with the opportunity, you could certainly we could in the fiction we could say that that you do calm his their their, their wounded ego. So that eventually they might be receptive to, yeah, to Ren. yeah. I think I it's just maybe he just see just seeing a a raw scale being a, <laughs> so so accommodating is it makes maybe kind of uh, softens their view on on raw scales for a while until maybe Samargath can get Ren to talk to them and and once once you've kind of appeased him and and assuaged his their their ego uh mm -hmm. yellow eyes will say i'm i'm sorry if i my the temperament got a, the best of me before it's just that little one was asking about fujira and that whole situation was so complicated um uh, he he took the great treasure that he made that was intended for the house and took it away. And there were many that were upset uh, by that. And I bringing that whole thing back up just, it was not good. So uh, thank you. You, you, you can go back to uh, 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 Vizali, um little one. Okay. And then I go and then I turn back and then I wave. Oh bye. <laughs> and then I go. Goodbye. A little more officious there. <laughs> Gosh. Uh Ren, um, so uh, you're a couple tracks uh on the way to your shadow self here. A yes. couple of ticks there. Um so th that terror kind of took a, a hold of you. You ran away from your friend. Um, what would you do after that? Shit myself. Well, actually, I'm going back to the uh, clutch. Okay. Uh, uh, do that. <laughs> so uh, if we can put the timing together, let's say that you get back to the clutch uh, a little bit after Tavern uh, and uh, a Vox have kind of started to settle in for the evening. Do you go and talk to them? Do you go no. and hide away? What do you think? I think I'm gonna hide in my room. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, Vox Tavern. You'll see that uh, uh, Ren comes in. Doesn't speak to you. What What does your space look like, Ren? It's pretty compact, but also also has pretty designs because, of course, <laughs> and it helps me sleep. <laughs> what kind of uh, What kind of designs? Just random designs. Okay. Do they have some meaning for the the prophesying or scene? Yeah, or is yeah it, I okay. think so. Okay. Yeah. So, as a seer, do, um, do you imagine that that's a uh, a gift that you have, or is that something that you're trained in, or both? What What do you think? So the seer, so the playbook makes it seems that it's like seeing shadow. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's less a gift and more a curse in a sense. Okay. So. All right. Um, so that that is, they probably might make uh, some other uh, Drake's nervous. There are older seers that that have a, a clutch, but they're kind of the odd Drake out uh, often. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, Tavern Vox, when you see Ren come in and squirrel themselves away, uh, uh, when they when Drem. Uh, hides. What, what do you do? Um, he kind of uh, uh, is trying to settle down, but seeing Rem come in, like kind of uh, uh, picks himself up. Rem, everything uh, okay? No, sir. Is there a door 
or curtain. How do you imagine that uh, your root, your your area is separated from the rest? There's a curtain. Okay. But so uh, it's also thick because it because it helps. It also I don't want too much light in. Okay. And I imagine that Drake snore too. Yeah. So I think this is the point where Vox, you know, is hearing this ruckus, and I think he's had a pretty decent nap in the library and here. So he <laughs> climbs up like on a, a higher shelf, and he can, you know, he's trying to get an eye in to see inside of Ren's place to see, you know, what they're doing, and then decides to launch him, launch themselves into the curtain, um, to see if he can, if they can surprise Ren and get them to open up and you know say something so i'm just going to launch myself into the curtain okay so i if that's not a move right uh i think ren is gonna jump and say up the cuss words like what the what, what is this what <laughs> he, like they're still terrified well, it's it's good to know that you're still, you know, you're still capable of speech. How are you doing? Leave me alone. Oh, uh, we just had a good time. I mean, what are you so upset about? I mean, we just got back. Everything's great. We're going to have a party tomorrow. Everyone hates me. <laughs> Nobody hates you. We all like you. What are you talking about? Uh. Yeah. How Tessa hates me, and now how Rothscar hates me. Why would they hate you? Because all their dragons are dumb. <laughs> well, there are dumb dragons in every house. Come on. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a little bit unreasonable to think the entire house hates you. Maybe one particular dragon hates you, but, you know, not the whole house. It just... Numerically, it's uh, in not not likely. <laughs> if there's if there's one thing I learned on our trip, it's that Fujira seemed to hate us at first, and by the time we left, was happy with us. So, I think I think the older that's dragons will tried, come around. That's what I tried telling Yellow Eyes, but Yellow Eyes will have none of it. You talk to Yellow Eyes? Yes. Ooh, he's grumpy. Ooh. Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he likes anybody. I wouldn't take it personally. <laughs> so that seems like a good place to 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 cut on that line. Um, I, I want to check in because there's still a, a matter hanging out there with uh, Samograth, and, and then I think we maybe cut forward. Uh, Samograth, um, are you returning to the clutch, or are you staying in the, the the workshop to to work on this object, or or what what do we think? Um, or something else? I think Samograth is going to stay at the forge for the evening mm -hmm. to kind of work on because that maybe in Samograth's mind that is that matter is done. <laughs> Samograth has swept the floors, yes. and so yeah. So now they're back to. Um, whatever it is that Vasali was teaching them. All right. So I, I think that this is going to come to you doing your dragon trade, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, so this is specifically a purification ritual, right? Yeah. So we'll call this that, that that's the, the, the sort of the, the function of this. So one of the, you can, one of the, if it's if the functional bit, of the choices essentially is, is purifying this thing. Okay. Yeah, I'll roll. Oh, okay, guys. I have pretty good dice today. That um, is crazy. Yeah, double sixes. Uh, so, so you, you have boxcars. You have the highest result possible you could have gotten there. You yeah. go to purify the stinger. What happens and what does it look like? Mm, so this is something that Samagath hasn't tried before. Uh, this is maybe something that uh, Samagath has heard Vizali and some other older dragons talk about. 
but they didn't under Samograph didn't understand and it's just like, oh, okay, whatever. But what it inv involves is, is first of all, a very physically strenuous process. So even though you're not necessarily like exercising while you're doing it, but mm -hmm. after that, like you're always just very exhausted physically. Um, and it's, uh, with, because there's also like you create with different materials for Samograph, it, it involves a lot of s singing, um, but it's like um, there are no words. So it's just like it's a song and it's physically exhausting because you have to pull it from like your soul, basically, and like it, it sing with a draconic essence. And then that song then actually forms the glass that will circle like an egg around whatever um, object that needs to be purified. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it, it's doable for Samograth because the stinger is not that big. So if it's a bigger object, then it would probably need like a, an older dragon to do it to like cover the whole thing. Um, yeah, so it like it's like a glass egg case circling the stinger and floating in the air and it's just like and it's just oh lights rainbow things flashing around and then you see like the stinger it's at first very dark but then it's like the darkness is like melting as these this rainbow light show is going on in that egg so it kind of melts off and it's it's sublimated away by the glass and yeah. pulled away and dissipated what does the stinger look like when all is said and done? It, um, it's like, uh, it actually, it looks like, it looks like metal. So it's like a metallic, uh, like the tip of a spear. It, okay. It looks like it's, it's like scaled. Because it came from the That top. seems, that seems perfect. So you've got this beautiful, uh, uh, metal scaled uh, stinger that has been purified of that darkness and it is striking and, and beautiful and, and amazing. Um, and I imagine then you crash. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, I think we can cut to the next day uh, with, with the, the four of you there. Uh, preparations are starting to be made for uh, this this party here uh, in the evening. Um, uh, Samograth is recovering. Um, Ren is starting to come out of it, I assume. Uh, and so is there anything that anybody wants to do during the day in the lead up to this, to this gathering, to Imperius Onyx's celebratory party and uh, the gathering of a lot of older, older dragons and drakes? Um, uh, let me start then with you, uh, Vox. Yeah, so I think Vox is actually going to hold court out in, outside of the Clutch's home area with the rest of the young drakes that asked what was going on. And I think this is where he gets to tell the story the way he really wanted to. This is the way Vox gets to st tell the story the way they really wanted to. And basically tell all the other drakes this you know and, and embellish and say this is all the monsters we fought off and you know this was the terrible you know shadow you know bee things that were awful and all that kind of stuff yeah and i imagine that 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 most of the the, the nearby younger drakes the that they're even even less uh 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 a solidified scale or listen carefully there are, there are probably some other clutches and things that uh uh are maybe a little more skeptical they're your your obvious rivals you know uh that uh, uh you know are are maybe a little bit older than you and and you know scoffing a little bit at your stories uh, but you will certainly have these these younglings um uh, uh in the in the, the palm of your paw uh, I think, uh, I think uh, I don't know if there's a move for this, but I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure that there are rumors that abound about our clutch. And I think I end and punctuate this with, you know, by holding up the fruit that we have left. And I'm like, and then we got the fruit and it was purified and here it is. 
Ooh. So is there something you want from another dragon? No. The, uh, well, uh, all I really want is uh, probably rumors to start. So maybe reputation. Okay. So so I think that's fair. Let let let's just. I think that's a thing that we don't have initially a move for that. But I think we can say that that's a that's a, a set of rumors that are spreading out. Uh, about uh, your success, certainly uh, you've spoken very openly about it. So that is that is brewing. So uh, that's some fiction you can draw on. Does that seem cool? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, um, Ren, uh, what about you? Um, so I'm I'm gonna be stubborn, and now that I'm I'm no longer af well, I'm still afraid because I still have that mark. Hey, right, right, but like. But like I'm gonna be stubborn and start like uh uh when Vox is telling the story I want to like uh I wanna start spreading the whole thing about Fujira up, like amping that up and say, Hey, this guy really helped us. We wouldn't have done this without being able to swim to the across the ocean. So That's interesting. Um and basically, uh, basically, uh, like have the young dragons talking about Fujira so that the older dragons would do something about it. Sure. Um, I think that what we're looking at here um, in sort of the long term of how this will roll out mm -hmm. is uh, actually an act despite danger. Because right. you are putting yourself in kind of a, a, a difficult position. You're kind of yeah. drawing eyes to you. Um, yeah, so let me have let's you roll get current. ready to freaking fail again. Uh, actually, that's a ten. So. That is a ten. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the your your the words and you talk about Fujira and um, uh, do it in such a way that that those rumors start to spread within a few hours. People aren't sure exactly. I mean, it's that sort of uh, game of of telephone. Or carrier owl, um, or whatever uh, that uh, uh, spreads this out, so it doesn't get traced uh, back to you, and it kind of pops up enough and quickly enough that uh, uh, there's there's no blowback on you at this point. Does that seem cool? Yeah. Like you've got you've got the situation controlled right now, um, and and you can kind of let that go throughout the day. So when you get to the party. No one's going to yell at you for any of that. Uh, Tavern, what about you? Uh, Tavern waits until uh, Vox goes out and kind of starts uh, talking to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and he uses his ability to uh, fade into the background to, to kind of sneak out past everybody Yeah, without, without talking to and um, he wants to spend the day uh, just kind of uh, um, being a little bit more peaceful. He goes around and uh, visits the animals that are in the area. And he's like, oh, did, did I miss anything while I was gone? And, you know, uh, talk to the, the spirits that are around and, you know, make sure everything was okay. Uh, um and say, and we're going to have some really special food tonight. I'm gonna, I'll try and bring you back some. And the animals are, are excited because you are one of those that, that pay uh, attention to them. Um, and so they will come and, and tell you this. Uh, what's one striking or interesting thing that the animals have gathered that you might show off at the party? Hmm. Um. Nothing's coming immediately to mind. Do any of the other uh, players have any ideas? Yeah. Any, any suggestions uh, for anyone? What if they dug up an old, ancient golden dragon scale? Yeah, they, they pulled it out. It's it's a luster like you haven't seen before. It 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 doesn't belong to any of the the the, the dragons that you know. Um, it's, uh, uh, a very, very deep color to it. Does that seem cool? Yeah, that seems really cool. Okay. Um, that kind of 
Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. You know it's an old dragon that this belongs to because you can't even can't even can't even bend the scale. It won't even bend at all. So it is solid. And they, they bring that to you. Um, and uh, then they accept graciously all the nuts and berries that you've brought them. Um, and uh, they go to town on the granola, um, uh, uh, even as they kind of climb all over you. So I imagine that we see the shot of you and the little animals kind of climbing all over, uh, even as they've brought that to you. I, and I tell them the story about, you know, and there was these really bad bees. And they go, <laughs> oh, bees. I mean, they, they unlike the librarian, they take bees seriously. They're like, oh, no, bees are bad news when they get angry. You don't want to do that. They're not wasps, but they're bad, but they get really angry. And so, oh, yeah, they understand exactly what you're talking about. They they completely sympathize with you. They get it. They're on your scale. Good. <laughs> Um, and, and lastly, before we kind of do the party, um, uh, is there anything else that you wish to do, uh, Samagrath? Samagrath is going to wake up pretty late, and pretty sore, and then it's going to waddle off to find Ren. Uh, and uh, so where do you think you find Ren? Um, probably in... One of the corners of, or actually, no, yeah, the corner of where the clutch sleep, sleeps. Okay. And the, then, the, like, yeah, the little buildings back there. Ren is, it looks, Ren looks like they've pulled themselves together because they are, are whispering and talking with other, other young raw scales. Yeah. So I, I waddle over and then I poke Ren. Ren is poked. <laughs> And then oh, I'm, a I'm gonna take your paw and just walk. Okay. <laughs> towards um our house, my house. Okay. <laughs> and you can get back there. Uh, let me ask you this, Samagrath, before you you uh, have your little conversation with Ren. What does your area of the household look like? Of the clutch, or yeah, of the the clutch's household, yeah. Um, uh, actually, well, uh, Maria, this is up to you, but I, I feel like, um, I feel like Semergrath actually sleeps with Ren. Okay. Yeah. Like, just because Semergrath used to, well, tries to follow Vox, but Vox keeps moving around. So... <laughs> So then Sam got to find someone else to attach to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For sleeping times. All right. So like, do you have like a special spot? for uh, for Sam, or is it just like, uh, just like sleep like in the corner <laughs> over there? I have no idea because my space is really small. <laughs> I mean, I just don't bother. you know like, okay, fine, you can sleep there. <laughs> Yeah, so I think we spoon. Oh. <laughs> and so you can come back, and, and Ren seems a little more together. Hmm. And I'm basically taking Ren to uh, to Yellow Eyes. Yeah, I, I and Ren is completely aware of this, and 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 he's and they're like, "Are you okay? Are you sure this is a good idea?" You just need to sweep the floor. Okay. <laughs> and, and... Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So we go to the room and is I'm assuming Yellow Eyes is there? Yes. Yellow Eyes has has, has had a nice dr draconic nap and has come back to do work and is is making notes and, and of course getting ready for the party this evening. Mm. Okay. So once we go in, I'm like I like point at the broom and I'm like pointing at it insistently. <laughs> I start sweeping the floor for, for uh, confusedly. Yeah. <laughs> just randomly, not even around yellow eyes, just start sweeping the floor. <laughs> yeah. But in the same room. And then Sam the same... Yeah, and then Sam is gonna go up to yellow eyes and then just like point. <laughs> point <laughs> at it.
All right, Yellow Eyes says to you. To me? Says to you, all right. I leave. And then says, but, but take them with you when you go. But see, see, Yellow Eyes kind of pushes aside the little document that they had kind of waiting to, to send that they, they were going to kind of puts it aside, acknowledges okay. your gesture. And I lay down a tiny, it looks like a seashell, but it's made of glass. And it's like, if you blow on it, it just, it, it actually only makes one note. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> the whistle. <laughs> okay. Round. Uh, um, uh, and, and they will, will notice that, that later, but it does seem like, like, they have calmed down and this gesture seems to have, have reached out to them. Okay. And then Samargoth is going to go and hug Ren and then try to leave. If Ren allows for that. <laughs> Ren is super confused, but he don't leave with you, I guess. <laughs> yes. And Ren doesn't make the situation worse. Uh, so we can do that a victory. <laughs> yeah. Hey, win. Good wins. Uh, so we're going to cut to to dusk. Um, and we know that this is a party. We know that uh, uh, there are going to be uh, a number of the, the long tooth drakes and some of the bearded, probably a couple of the bearded dragons that are going to be there. We know that Imperious Onyx will be there. Obviously, Ugras and Yellow Eyes and even Vizali will all be there as well as others. Uh, it is a celebration. Um, uh, and we know that it is at the, the Green Heart. We know that it is in that great chamber. So I want to ask you to, let me let me have you add so we, we kind of know what this Green Heart place looks like. So uh, let me have you, Vox, I'm going to start with you. Have you frame, so this, this, party this chamber uh uh say tell me something about it so it's enormous just like you would expect for the greater dragons to be here so um drakes would be tiny in this area and i think it's named after the center where there would normally be a large fire there is literally a large uh what do you call that? Whenever you, you so it's rocks around like a fire pit kind of area, uh -huh. and whenever the fire is lit, these rocks glow, uh, uh, glow in a green kind of way. They start to produce light. So rather than warm up and turn orange or red, they light up and turn orange or green as they get heated up. Okay, and that's where it gets its name. And I like that the the idea that the walls kind of catch and reflect that. And everything has that sort of wonderful haze of, of green to it, like like uh, like the Emerald City kind of of look. And again, as you said, big tall tables that are huge. There are a few things that are set up so that smaller drakes can get up to to serve things, but but they're they're enormous and uh, you can see great platters and and so on. And uh, the 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 fiery. Uh, uh, who is the, the, the great draconic chef, um, uh, 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 dragon fiery, um, is, is there and has, has, has put out the great bowls of punch. Um, so, uh, let me ask you, uh, Ren, what's another striking detail about this, this room or this chamber or this party when you arrive? Uh, I think the shadows are very large. Uh, like unusually large <laughs> like uh like like the the light catches them and and yeah. does something okay yeah like like it's like in your like i'm not quite sure if it's the darkness or if it's just plain trick or like or if it's just the light because i'm such a young and stupid dragon <laughs> I, I imagine the that shadows you know, are really large. Yeah, I, I imagine they're they're huge to you, and of course that makes you nervous because of what you've seen. But I, I imagine if we've got these light things projecting from the the center, that we might even have like 
cutouts and uh, displays and things that are on tables to cast almost sort of Balinese shadow puppet kind of uh, images on the walls yeah. in some places. Uh, that that's probably they're probably uh, uh, dragons who work in that kind of art with light. We we established there was a light forge, so they probably work with that kind of thing. But they're so big, you can't even see the scale. So yeah, they would seem kind of terrifying to you at, at that size. Uh, what about uh, Tavern? What What's another detail is, uh, about this place that, that you're celebrating in? Um, I always like the water feature. So there's a nice big fountain, like, right in the center with like koi fish uh, swimming around and uh, okay uh, so is it is it just is it like a uh, like a raised pool or is it a fountain that's spraying or what what do you imagine it's, that it's a uh, like it's, it's a, a, a built on over to one of the sides so it has like a waterfall coming down to a large okay. pool that stretches out um, with a like you know, a decorative uh, wall around it. And I imagine we, we've talked about the, the dragons working with the elements, so they can probably, like, run the waterfall along the ceiling and then down the wall into this. They can kind of shape that and uh, uh, can rise up. And uh, what's striking about the koi that drakes keep? Um... Uh, these, the koi, uh, similar to that, that dragon scale that I have found, the koi are actually, uh, gold and, uh, silver and these, these bright, uh, metallic colors, uh, and, um, yeah, occasionally they'll, they'll, uh, just like dart through and when the light hits them, it kind of reflects off and looks like a, uh, another little light show showing ah, up. Perfect, especially if they can swim up the waterfall and along the the ceiling, and we can get those fishes of that. I imagine if we have koi like that, that there are probably drakes that are collectors and breeders. You know that 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 uh, you know have a whole hobby of 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 managing these kinds of fish and things like that. They have their little pond that is a hoard for them of these things. Um, probably bring them out here to to show off. Um, uh, so that sounds good. I like that. And finally, uh, uh, Agatha, uh, uh, Samograth, what's another detail of this room of the chamber of this party? It's, um, uh, when you step into the chamber, like normally, especially, uh, bra scales can't really fly yet unlike the older dragons, but when you step into the room, you immediately are floating a little bit, um, uh, thanks to the good old dragons in the in the air forge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe with help from the, the ink forge as well. Uh, it's like, it's, there's, there's constantly a little bit of air and then also like sometimes you see like words floating by but it's it like lifts everyone so that you can you can go to the top of the fountain if you want and then do like reach in and like i don't know <laughs> like, no i like it I, uh, uh, I, there are older dragons here so that lightness probably helps them move and feel yeah. like they're moving like they're young yeah um that's probably the main intent but for you it's like walking on the moon yeah. Um, uh, gives you access to, to move around and jump around. Um, so uh, your call to this party, uh, it is great and, and, and magical. We have all these different drags. We have all the chromatic dragons there. We have representatives from the different houses. Um, you know, uh, you're hearing a, a good deal of talk. They, you know, they've got those, those punch bowls out there. Um, There's certainly some other groups of raw scales almost all of them older than you uh so you are are the youngest uh of the 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 clutch that is there um so what is your goal 
what is it that you definitely want to do while you're here at this party, Vox? Um, I want to get the attention of an older dragon, and um, I want them to gain a level of interest or respect for us because we've been so successful. Okay. So, um, okay. If I may add, sure. I, I, my intent in the party is to put on a shadow puppet show of my vision with the rest of my clutch just to to get Fujira back into the city. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 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 and let, let, let's, we got those two intentions. Let me, let me ask, uh, let's get all the intentions out on the table and then we can figure out how we're going to, going to, uh, align those, uh, Tavern, you've been asked to serve at this party. There are lots of, of, uh, dragons here and even some raw scale drinks like yourself. What is it that Tavern wants out of this party? Um, Tavern mainly just wants to, to make it through the party. Um, <laughs> Uh, being around so many other dragons and so many large dragons, he's, uh, you know, he has the, the tendency to kind of disappear. So he's, he's just trying to get through it successfully, uh, without, uh, getting stepped on or, uh, embarrassing himself in any way. So, so I think we're going to see you kind of act despite danger and kind of, kind of muster your courage here in this scene. Um, uh, and uh, Samagrath, what about you? What is your intent for this party? Samagrath wants to gather treasures, uh, but treasures to Samagrath are like flowers that Samagrath picks or dead bees. <laughs> so anything could really be a treasure for Samagrath. So things that people leave on the tables and... and yeah. uh, uh, okay, all right. Uh, so... Uh, the, Sam McGrath is imagining this as a great and, and mighty adventure moving across this, this room from place to place. Slowly, yeah. All right. Uh, so let's start with Tavern. Then let's let's move to uh, uh, Sam McGrath. Then let's check in with Nicholas. And then I think because uh, there's kind of a crescendo to what you're doing, Ren. We'll, we'll, we'll work with you last. Does that seem like a cool way to do it? Yeah, I, I agree. So, so the, the dragons are there. Imperious Onyx, you know, welcomes you, uh, invites you to part, partake, has you move some things around, doesn't put too onerous a duty on you. Um, but there is that bit where not long after that, then then the the dragons and the drakes are in their own world, talking to one another and 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 chatting and moving around and carrying on their own things. And you're kind of floating around, bouncing uh, between them. Tavern, you want to you want to keep yourself together. You want to not embarrass the clutch. You don't want to embarrass yourself. Let's let's have you roll your courage. Okay. I just recently improved my courage up to a zero, so. Yes. <laughs> oh, a 10. Wow. 10. So, okay. <laughs> so uh, I think that uh, at some point you will bounce to one of these corners um, and you're a little surprised uh, because you will see that there is a, uh, uh, a, a bearded uh, dragon that is occupying this far corner and uh, uh, it sees you as you kind of have moved along and it gestures. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Or, sorry. Yes, Dre. Come and sit by me. Do not like uh, these authorities. Oh. But I also do not want to look like I am alone. That, that would be excellent. That would that's a good plan. Uh, so, uh, I'll, what would you like to talk about something, or uh, you know, we can talk if you like, or we can sit and listen. I just want the company. Well, excellent. I would be happy to to sit and listen with you. Hmm. And and he will. He does. 
listen intently to to the movement and the the beat and the sound of the room um and 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 doesn't talk but does from time to time we'll we'll kind of reach out a finger and maybe point at something in the room and you'll see when they point at it like something happens like like you see a conversation go off and new and and something like 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 he is super aware of things in the room and he's kind of showing you how he sees things. Neat. He says, when you're out in the wild, you can do the same thing. Uh, and we'll cut from you uh, over to uh, uh, Samograth. Um, so you're moving. Um, tell me, Tell me what I mean. The we we we've described you pick up little pieces and things, but what is the prize like thing? You're like ooh, that you see and want to get. Um, one of the dragons has a really magnificent beard, and um, and it's. I don't know what is it about it that is so fascinating to Samograth. Maybe it's the color of it. Oh, I think the beard, it's it's see-through. So it looks like glass. So mm -hmm. Samograth just like circling around and yeah. just wants one. It's a great white dragon, with kind of the blue highlights, but that beard is like is like crystal coming down. All right. I think. What is what the, there's the moment when it kind of turns and it's talking and a little bit is draped over and you have that opportunity. Let's have you act despite danger. Okay. To not yourself. <laughs> to pluck that beer. Yes. <laughs> okay. I got a nine. Yes. Got a nine. Um, so you can get a hold of it, but something something goes wrong. What is it that goes wrong? Do they spot you? Uh, do you knock something over? Uh, wh what do you imagine happens here? I'm pretty sure that you know <laughs> that little bit of <laughs> okay. um, uh, and you'll drop to to or glide to the floor. Um, and there's this white dragon kind of looks around. It goes to roar, like it, it's going to roar, but it realizes there are all these other drakes and dragons around. It really can't do that. Um, and while it doesn't come chasing after you, you see that it sees you. Like it marks your spots. It can see the blue. It knows that you have that white belly. Even as your as its little hair kind of vanishes out behind a corner as you run off with it, um, and you're like, "Uh oh, that 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 Drake is going to find out my name at some point." Yep, I look for Fox. But you've got this beard. Yes, it's so good. It's so nice, That's solid. Good. It must have hurt like the Dickens when you pulled it out. I'm sure it did. <laughs> yes. Um, Did you uh, pull the entire beard, or just a just, just a few of the the, oh, the yeah? Hand. It was it was plucked. Um, so let's come to uh, Nicholas. Nicholas, you move around. You're trying to be smart and clever and cunning and 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 find a, a likely who who is the 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 dragon that you set your eyes on to impress. So I think I'd like to uh, combine this with the Wren's Shadow Puppet okay. story in that we're going to recount our story. Okay. And if, if you're okay with that, Maria. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. And my take on this is that I'm trying to recount this story in a an exaggerated manner. And the dragon that has the most interest the one that seems most interested is going to be where I'm going to strike. That's the one that I really want to make my audience and make sure that they are very aware and interested in uh, the story. And it, it seems, what's the right word? 
it really seems to be a heroic of a level that is beyond our age. That seems that seems awesome. It seems like both of you are are convincing a dragon. Yes. Um, uh, and I think that uh, that uh, Ren's kind of stands as sort of a, a prologue to um, uh, uh, then uh, Foxes. So, um, Ren, tell me something, and, and we'll assume that the others are, are assisting and helping you with this. Tell me about this shadow play that you are putting on, this story that you're doing with the, the shadows and the lights and the tail. I think I'm gonna, uh, if, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this, but I mm -hmm. think I'm gonna invoke a moon or maybe the Liberty moon, since that's the moon of purification and freedom. Oh, that sounds great. And I think the, I'm gonna use it to, to have like, uh, have the, I have a representation of like the shadows, like basically recreate the vision as I saw it in my dream. That sounds but, great. Like for example, the four dra little dragons are the koi fish that using the koi fish shadows mm -hmm. and then I'll, I like as Fujira myself and all that stuff. Oh, that is perfect. Yeah. But now we're going to go to dice. So how many friendship gems are you going to return to do this? I will return all three of mine with Fox since. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you have a plus three. Yay. Let us have you roll. And I don't know how much I got because I, I guess it, oh, there we go. That's an 11. <laughs> That's an 11. So uh, the magic is exceptionally powerful and it remains within your control. Yes. So we get those images the the koi shift and 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 move over to represent those four dragons we see the 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 lights moving around and the whole room goes hushed once this starts and there'll be that bit as it travels along we see the symbols of fox samograth of your household and we kind of recognize fujira in the the design there uh as it goes on and there's probably a few maybe gasps from some of the, the, the dragons, um, but they will watch and they will see that tale told. They will, they will know what has happened here. They will see that story. And when it kind of finally wraps, you will probably see some of the older drakes dragons actually have their heads bowed like like this they've they've heard the lesson um and you can actually see that there are some of the older ones that are 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 speaking and you can hear them talking and they 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 say the name fujira um and uh one of them the 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 white and blue one kind of raises himself up and says, this has been too long. I will fly to him, to them, to Drem, and I will say to them that they are welcome here when they wish to return. And there may be some, some mutterings, but the, 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 you realize that this white and blue one is kind of even older than you thought as it kind of raises itself up and kind of fills the room and says, that is my decision. I have not long before I will stand in one place forever, but we will fix this before we do. And it will nod and it will look at the four of you, first at Vox, then at Wren, then at Tavern, then at Sa wait, and then back at Samograth, um, and uh, then it moves out and it kind of pours out of the doorway and you know the great wings open up and you will see it take off towards towards the sea, towards uh, where they are. Um, 
and everyone's kind of dumbfounded. They're talking, they, you know, who are they? Who are they? You see Imperious Onyx is going, well, that's my clutch. They're the ones I, I walk, they're the ones I mentor. They're, they're, those are mine. Yes, yes, yes. They're with me. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, very much taking credit for it. Um, but the, the the question I have for you then, uh, Vox, is who who comes to you because of this? What who is the the Drake or the dragon that is drawn to to you and your clutch then? Um, so I think that this is uh, you know, Vox had thought we would look for someone who uh, a dragon who was of a lofty old you know high level. I think this is probably just maybe a winged drake, someone who is slightly older than we are. Um, their name is, um, let's see. Um, their name is Sirat, S-I-R-A-T. And okay. they are actually uh, black and white striped. And they come to you and they say, You've done very, very well. Very, very, very well. Um, my clutch was lost. I mentored to them. They fell. Oh, no. It, it is some time ago. It is some time ago. But perhaps you will allow me to help you and your companions? I'm sure that would, yeah, that would be fantastic. Uh, we could always use some help and, you know, uh, in our adventures. I, I will help you. I will show you ways and help you so that you, you can be stronger. Wow. That, that, that's fantastic. Yes. And I think Vox does like a leap or two and spins around. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, the the party will go on. It is it is magnificent. Uh, 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 tales will roll out from this. The full story of your journey um, embellished now. Uh, obviously, the story has been blown up like proportionally. Um, so let me ask you this uh, then, Fox, um, for our epilogue here. Um, what is our epilogue scene with with Nicholas Fox? Um, so I think Vox has, um, this is, you know, probably over the next day or two, and Vox is out practicing with Sirat in the, uh, you know, in the area where the rest of the uh, raw drakes are. Um, and, of course, Sirat can fly, and that's something that's very um, jealous-inducing, maybe? And... Vox is bounding around, you know, from location to location, maybe gliding a little bit as he's, as they are trying really hard to um, fly and get further and further out. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um, getting that, to gain that, that space moving to the wings on their own to have them work. Um, and in now, Ren, in the wake of this, this shadow, uh, theater that you put on this telling of this tale, this uh, reclamation and uh, bringing back uh, of of Fujira, sort of the final step of the process that you guys began last session. Um, uh, what what is it that we see of you, uh, Seer, uh, in your epilogue? I think uh, since we're pretty close to being wing drakes, I think we if is is it okay if we epilogue as a wing drake? Absolutely. All right, so I think we're flying around, uh, and then, uh, like, or rather, we we go out to uh, the uh, how, I'm trying to think how to how, like what kind of scene it would be. Sure, but I, it's like we're flying uh, out to the. We're flying out to the to the island again. Okay. Uh, and and then and then we come back uh, with more fruit and the cave's there, but for year I isn't because he's back. For so, but like I I I I would like to like uh, start using the cave for for like 
for like visions maybe? Oh, okay. Yeah, so so we have that flyover where we see the area that you had to climb through before and now passes beneath you with ease. And we see you at the cave that is still pretty striking and make that into a place that you can fly to and have those visions as it, the cave faces out onto the ocean, onto that 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 island. And uh, yeah, we'll see you meditating and hear the sound of the the sea echoing there with that. That sounds great. Uh, Tavern, what about you? Uh, for Tavern, um, I'm going to have it be like right at the end of the party. Uh, um, he uh, is is heading out and uh, he he remembers that he has that gold scale that he didn't even show anybody. Like, oh, I forgot to tell the story about this and he's kind of like looking at it and he brushes it off and he turns it over and brushes it and there is um a bit of like a black streak across it so it looks kind of like a uh like the shadow has touched this Ooh. so we get kind of a sinister maybe a little bit more sinister shot there as you you look at that it's you yeah. and black <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like that. I like that. Uh, especially since you had that. I mean, you were queen of the bees for a while. You know, there's that, that in the back of your mind. That was that was that was awesome. They were smaller than you. You were bigger than them. And finally, uh, 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 for uh, Samograth, uh, what is the last bit? What do we see from from you in the, the epilogue there? Um. It, so. What is it? Okay, so it's in the forge again, and that the the big blue and white dragon, <laughs> blue eyes white dragon. Um, yes. <laughs> it uh, it's there, or they're there, and then uh, looking upset, and uh, Viz Vizali, yes, Vizali. Mm -hmm. Is, is there as well <laughs> with the same kind of like, oh, hey, welcome. <laughs> as a broom. And, yeah, yeah. And then um, it's like the, the yeah, the, the clear bearded dragon is like upset and like telling, you know, being like, oh, this is how dare they. And then um, Samurai is there with, with their head bowed and then, um, very tentatively lifts up this glass lute and on there is one string <laughs> and then like looks imploringly <laughs> at at um at that dragon's beard and i think it's just like a freeze frame on, freeze that. <laughs> on that all right perfect perfect all right thank you guys very much that gives us the the sort of the capper story i thank you for bringing the fujira stuff back this time, uh, uh, it is appreciated, and thank you for being willing to to paint the scenes here uh, for a pillion. Um, uh, so I enjoyed it very much. Uh, uh, I love I love the little bits here, and I want to thank you for for doing that. Um, anything anybody wants to say about a pillion um, uh, or the the play? I don't want to do necessarily roses and thorns, but anything that you guys particularly liked, like if someone was like, "Oh, should I play a pillion?" or not, what would you point to as, as things you, you like about it? Uh, good stuff. I think it's super cute. Uh, and yeah. I, I don't know if it was just the way that we played it, or if maybe this is a part of the, the, the rule book as well, but I think we were, we really had a lot of space to be very creative with, um, in terms of world building and then mm -hmm. also in terms of it's like I guess there's just not a lot of it it's yeah there's not a lot of restrictions or even kind of like tropes that you have to work with so then you can kind of just do whatever and I really enjoyed that yeah there aren't that many moves and so as a GM rather than trying to fit things into moves I go okay well if it's not a move then people can just do it you know, mm. rather than, than trying to, to shoehorn things in it. And I kind of like the space that it gives uh, uh, to that. And that, that felt good. 
I found the playbooks to be very evocative. So I think I think they were very good in helping draw out the the correct tone for the game and all of that. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um the, the, there's some neat classes and and the the exciting like Dra- draconica add some things to that um, uh, like, i and so, uh, a couple of the ones we weren't allowed to pick were the rebel and the orphan which both fuck with the class system <laughs> yeah the dragons so like the orphan you don't have a clutch and the rebel you don't belong to a house <laughs> so <laughs> yeah they're neat changes but they're they're changes they're um, big changes. Big changes. In yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, John, anything that, that you saw that you, you dug? Um, yeah, I just really like how like light and stripped back the system is compared to Dungeon World or like Apocalypse World. Um, just by like simplifying it to the, just the three stats. And like you said, there's not a lot of moves. It, it Like you said, it gives it a lot of area. Mm-hmm. Uh, to to play with, and it, it you know makes it a little bit easier to for for you to go outside of that, you know. Um, and also, I liked uh, all of the uh, role play cues that are built into everything. Like each of the moves is really evocative of an aspect of the character in the house and the obligation and the virtue and and the shadow. So like it like it everything in there is like a cue to play up this part of your character, play up this part of the character. Yeah. One thing I really like though, that we, we got to doing like more role play and talking and, and building the scene this time. I still really like the idea of the virtues and that if you see someone express the virtue that you dig, you give them a friendship gem. We kind of, kind of forgot about that this time, but, but I, I like that mechanic a lot. I think that's a, that's a very clever mechanic and at a table with the gems, I think would be really awesome having that that tactile uh, nature to it. I find yeah. it really interesting that, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I find it really interesting that the there's no damage track. Like the, the closest thing to a damage track is the shadow and shadow self, but there's mm-hmm. no actual, you can die in this game. <laughs> Even though dragons can die before they hit Elder Dragon, which is weird. Well, yeah, I mean the well the, the, in the uh, in the setting, yeah. I mean right, right. No, they absolutely. mentioned that not a lot of dragons don't actually get to Elder Dragon, but there's no actual way for us to die unless we unless we get a hard move that probably makes us die. But um, right. I, yeah, that's the thing is is the shadow self is definitely the, the 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 spiral, and I think the intent is that over the course of the game you will hit your shadow self because there isn't a way to clear that uh, in the mechanics, um, uh, uh, you know, at least not easily. So you're going to hit that. You're going to have to go through that process and learn. And so I think that's actually part of maybe part of the longer term thing is about going through that cycles of hitting that. And maybe learning from it, um, so that that's sort of interesting. It's a, it's an aspect we didn't hit as much, but is is not as. You're right about the the damage track, um, uh, but the shadow self thing I think is is definitely a longer term thing. Well, it's one of the things I really liked about, you know, basically they took the darkest self from Monster Hearts and kind of turned turned it into a much lighter thing you know Mm -hmm. this is where you get angry and you go off by yourself and then everyone has to help you come out i kind of i kind of like that yeah well thank you guys so much i had a a great time running this uh i hope you hope you dug it um uh, i i liked i liked having the chance to do it it is it is a different than the usual usual stuff so uh, uh i had a good time with it um uh, Agatha, did you have something else to add? Oh. Uh I don't remember. So oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Talked over you, because that's what he does. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> okay. Uh yeah, thank oh. you for all the stuff you guys brought to the table. Um oh. Also, I have quite a few different like role playing games that are like for kids. Um so like Hero Maximus, uh, uh No Thank You Evil, uh Epilion, which I haven't 
been able to play yet or haven't been able to run yet. And I, I have to say, I like this for a even a, like a kids game more so than those. Yeah. yeah, I would definitely run this again if 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 I had if I had the right group. So I dig it. All right. Well, I am going to can do stop recording now. And uh, thank you all once again. And um, if you've watched to the end, this is the point at which I turn the broadcast off.